Most people have no idea that the most expensive appliance they have in their house is in fact their water heater. Now with today's prices along with sky high labor rates, if you've got to replace your tank, you can be spending upwards of $2,000. And that really is criminal because with just a little bit of maintenance, you can extend the life of your tank significantly you'll also gain efficiency and that means more hot water output in your home. But the problem is it's not always easy to do. But this year I learned about something new and I really was intrigued by this called the sediment buster. Now if you look close at this thing you really could put one of these together on your own but you'd need to get a Schrader valve along with these hose fittings. But I'm going to give this pre-made one a try and see if it can really clean my tank better than doing it the old way. Using air is supposed to have two benefits. The big problem on water heaters is if you try to drain them out, you may have so much calcium buildup in minerals and sediment that when you start to flush them out, you actually clog this valve. And this is what you need to use if you're gonna drain your tank. So if it gets plugged up, what are your choices? You could try to stick a piece of wire in there and that generally is a really dangerous idea. You could damage your element or even puncture your tank. This clever little invention allows you to inject a little bit of air. That will break up the clog, allow the draining to continue, but the second benefit is the one that I am really excited about. The bubbles are supposed to create a type of agitation inside your tank. So instead of just draining it, now you're going to be kind of scrubbing the inside with air and it should do a better job. So let's get started. I'll put it through a real test. You're going to begin by turning the power off to your tank. If it's gas, you'll need to maybe switch off a valve or an electrical switch like this or a circuit breaker. Now ideally for safety, you should let the tank cool down for several hours to make sure that the water is not too hot to handle. Now we can connect the sediment buster right to the valve on the bottom of your water heater. Now most water heaters will have a valve like this. Next we'll want to shut off the flow of cold water into your tank. Now most water heaters are just going to have a line going in, which is your cold feed. Mine is a bit different as this tank is an indirect tank, so I've got some additional pipes. If you're not quite sure which pipe is which, put your hand on each of them. The cold pipe is the feed, the hot water pipe going out is the part that's feeding the rest of your house. Next open several hot water fixtures. That can be a shower, a kitchen sink. This is just simply allowing some venting. Now other people will recommend opening your pressure valve on your water tank, but I generally don't recommend that. So I'm going to open the valve on my water heater. Now at this point, of course, nothing's coming out because the valve on the sediment buster is still closed. Now I'm going to crack it open and we'll take a look at what happens. As the water was draining in the tank, I noticed one thing. It is crystal clear. This tank doesn't even look like it needs to be cleaned. So this was kind of concerning me because I figured, how am I going to test this thing out? But watch this video a bit more to see what actually happens. The next move I'm going to make is closing the valve to the sediment buster itself. And I'm going to give a couple of little bursts of air into the bottom of the sediment buster. Now I'm using this tiny Makita air compressor that I got for about 99 bucks, but you don't have to use one of these. You can use a bicycle air pump. You can even use one of these cordless jobs. These things work just fine. You're not trying to inflate your tank. All you're doing is shooting a little bit of air. Now I'm going to open this valve back up and we'll see if there's any difference. Now the first thing I noticed right away is that the water is coming out about twice as fast. I'm guessing that I had to have some buildup around my valve so that air did the first job. It basically broke up anything that was in the way of this drain valve. But next, look at the water. This stuff is loaded now with rust, iron, and manganese, which is what we get a lot of here in New Hampshire. And keep in mind, this tank was crystal clear just a couple of minutes ago, so this is a really good sign that this little device is definitely working. But if you haven't cleaned your tank ever, you are going to see a lot of debris coming out, especially if you live in an area with hard water. Here's a clip from the company's video that they put online that shows some pretty nasty stuff coming out, and this is very typical. And at this point, I would say I feel like those videos are really true. What I'm seeing out of my tank is pretty amazing. This was crystal clear water. Now I am getting all types of buildup that had to have been in the inside of the tank or kind of lurking around the corners. Now at this point, it's up to you. You can repeat this process as many times as you want, but your tank is gonna run out of water. So you'll wanna go and crack open that cold water valve and you can leave everything else in place. You're just trying to get more water in there that you can flush out. And I did like the result, so I repeated this about 10 times until I didn't really see any more debris or dirty water coming out. And I've just got to simply remove the sediment buster off the bottom of the water heater, and then I'm ready to open the cold water valve again to refill the tank. 
Now one really important bonus tip, the valve on your water heater will often leak. And that's just because they're not used very often. Sometimes they wear out over time and this tank is close to almost 20 years old. If your valve is leaking a lot, it is a good idea to replace it. But as a short term or emergency fix, you can use one of these simple caps. Just screw it onto the bottom of your valve and then tighten it down. Next, I just need to reopen that cold water valve all the way and allow the tank to fill back up. You don't have to worry about air in the system at this point because the water from your cold line will fill your tank up to the very top. And once the water begins to come out of those faucets again, you can go ahead and close them. And then you'll want to restore the power or the gas to your water heater again, the same way it was when you started. So I am pretty impressed by this device. And I'd love to hear from you guys. If you've already owned one of these or bought one, let me know how it worked for you and what kind of results you got. And that old adage about if it ain't broke, don't fix it, doesn't really apply to water heaters because they are building up minerals and deposits while they're sitting. So every month, every year, they're just going to get worse and worse. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel on YouTube for more videos coming up.